So Dr. Morrison uh, also comes to us from the Randall Institute, from the Shen Lab, and uh, Jacob will be presenting uh, this plotty today for a graphical representation of epi alleles and epi states. Oh dear, how do I share this? It's not on there. Podium? No. Off the screen. Wait, see what? Let's try finding it again. There we go. What? There. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, as Tim mentioned, my name is Jacob Morrison. I'm a bioinformatics research scientist in the Shen Lab at Van Andel Institute. And I'll be talking about BizPlotty today, um, a tool to be able to create DNA methylation analysis plots. Um, so just as a very brief overview, um, for those of you who don't know what um, DNA methylation sequencing is, um, this can either be bisulfite-based or enzyme-based. And what happens is a uh, unmethylated cytosine will be converted into a uracil during this process whereas a methylated cytosine will be left as a C. Um, the uracils are then um, turned into thymines um, during PCR amplification. And what happens here is that the epigenetic difference that you start with um, is then turned into a genetic difference, which you can probe using um, sequencing and then be able to tell during the alignment stage where your uh, methylated and unmethylated cytosines are occurring. So where does bisplotty fit? In here. So um, first, BizPlotty is an in-development R-based package um, for plotting DNA methylation analysis figures using standards compliant file formats. And um, where this happens is you do your sequencing, I guess there's no laser. So you do your sequencing, you do your alignment, you extract your methylation, do your analysis, and then you would use BizPlotty then to uh, create figures that you can use to then um, uh, analyze your analysis that you've done or to be able to uh, put into uh, your papers and uh, presentations. Um, so the rest of the talk will be just going over the different types of plots that exist already and then what we plan to do in the future. So um, just as, to start, we have just kind of your standard global methylation plots where you can look at um, the density of methylation values um, across samples, um, whether it's 1D, which is not shown here, or 2D, which is shown, where you can compare um, two samples on a per CPG um, basis. Uh, this works with um, inputs from BSSeq objects, so those of you who you have used um, BSSeq before, um, as well as those who do um, uh, like epic arrays or 450Ks, um, you can use um, beta values from these uh, matrices um, in this as well. Uh, the next type of plot that we have are what we call multi-scale plots. And these are based on um, Kneidenberg et al. in Nature Methods of uh, 2014. Um, and what this does is it shows the average methylation values across many bin widths. So um, you can start with uh, small bins and then compare where you have short range methylation interactions to long range methylation. And so you can get this in a single um, view here using these plots. And so these inputs are generated via SnakeMake pipeline, which we have available um, on GitHub down at the bottom. Also have it in the summary um, as well. Um, and so you're able to do comparisons across samples this way, um, as is shown here in this um, example of uh, a newborn um, set of cells in a 103-year-old set of cells. And then we also have um, read and fragment level methylation plots. Um, and so these plots uh, use what we call the EpiBed format, which is a compact, information-rich, bed-compliant format file that we um, have uh, developed at VAI in the Shen Lab. Um, and what these plots do is each row here that you see is an individual read, or in this case specifically, a read fragment, where for paired end sequencing, you can combine the information um, that is correlated in that paired end, um, in that paired set of reads, um, and then you can look at that in an individual, um, as an individual entity. 
And then each column here then shows a single CPG uh, in the genome or a SNP uh, as is seen here. Um, and then you can also plot the average methylation. So it'll um, average each column into uh, the average value of the CPG methylation that you see there. Um, and then by being able to visualize SNPs, you can um, be able to uh, see allele-specific methylation um, or uh, epi states as well. Um, and so uh, another way that you can look at this is to look at long reads. So the previous example was um, short reads. Um, another way is to uh, use long reads. Um, currently, I want to mention that this only works for uh, cytosine converted long reads. Um, so in this case, EMC uh, plus PacBio. Pac um, but our goal is to add the mod, uh, mod BAM functionality in the future, um, which has been a recently uh, developed um, availability from SAM tools um, in the SAM specification. Um, also, by being able to look at read or fragment level data, from a bulk sample, you can get a quasi single cell visualization out of this because a single read will likely come from a single cell. Um, and so you can be able to tell differences that way. And then finally, with this type of plot, you can also look at gnome seq data. So you can um, be able to visualize both methylation from CPG methylation as well as um, crobentin accessibility via GPC methylation. Um, and I want to mention with these types of plots that both uh, read orders um, in uh, the CPG plot and the GPC plot are ordered the same, so that you can be able to tell uh, a combined, um, uh, uh, yeah, combined between the two. And so finally, just some future directions in summary. Um, right now, uh, it is only available on GitHub, but we are planning to aim for the October release this year, um, 316 of Bioconductor. Um, we're aiming to improve the existing plots I showed today, um, including multi-sample plots, adding annotation tracks, and um, other things. Uh, we're also planning to add additional plotting. Obviously, there wasn't many that we showed today, but we're looking at um, plots that show the methylation that surround different genomic features, CTCF sites, uh, promoters, enhances, enhancers, so on and so forth. Um, DNA or differentially methylated regions is a very common analysis, so we want to add plots for that. Um, looking at average methylation values in chrome HMM states, um, as well as if you have any plots that you tend to use when you do DNA methylation analysis, we'd love to hear those. We'd love to look at getting those added into uh, BizPlotty, so feel free to reach out to me or any of the other authors um, on that. And finally, uh, BizPlotty, like I mentioned, is an in-development R base package for plotting DNA methylation analysis figures using standards compliant file formats. Uh, we already have several plots types that are already implemented, and we're looking to more add more in the future. Um, so here are GitHub links for those, um, and as I mentioned, BizPlotty will be available uh, hopefully in October um, on Bioconductor. I just want to thank the other authors, um, Ben, James, Ian, um, way as well as the other members in the Shen Lab, uh, Wanding in the Joe Lab, and then obviously funding. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Morrison. Um, thank you to all of our speakers in this section. Um, Drs. Uh, ben Guri, Sato, um, Zarman, and, uh, and Dr. Morrison. If we have questions in person, please feel free to use one of the microphones. Uh, if you'd prefer to ask a question in chat on WebEx, please feel free to do so. Um, we have about uh, 13 minutes till the next set round of sessions. So um, if we don't have any questions, you might also feel free to avail yourself of a uh, refreshment of some sort. Um, thanks, everybody, for attending here and online. And I'll see you at the next section. And yep, take a short break, and we'll keep watching the chat for any questions you might have. So see you in about 15 minutes. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>